I sometimes make mistakes. I sometimes make mistakes too. I know. In fact, not only do we all make mistakes, but all biological systems involve error. And in this month's issue of Trends in Biochemical Sciences, our review discusses how mistakes in making proteins, mistranslation, might be physiological or not. Why would making mistakes be important? Do you think be a good idea? That's a key question, and we discuss several mechanisms by which mistranslation may benefit an organism. Cellular stress induced by mistranslation can initiate stress induced mutagenesis. In addition, upregulation of cellular chaperones such as heat shock proteins can lead to adaptive phenotypes and a so called increased effect. However, both of these mechanisms are indirect. Mistranslation is a source of cellular stress, and the, ad the adaptive phenotypes are not due to direct alterations of protein sequences as a result of mistranslation. So, can mistranslation directly increase cellular fitness? We consider two possibilities where this might be the case. Han and Udell showed that the mammalian methionine immunoacyl tRNA synthetase can recognize a number of non-cognate tRNAs and misacylate them with methionine. And these misacylated tRNAs can incorporate methionine into newly synthesized proteins at positions that code for non-methionine residues. So, a protein may end up with several methionine re residues, fairly randomly distributed, which uh, were not coded for in the gene originally, but how can that help? Well, Pan argues that the methionine residues may incorporate novel protective functions. It's been shown that methionine can help withstand oxidative stress. However, although it's clear that methionine misacylation and mistranslation are widespread, it's found in bacteria and fungi as well as mammalian cells, suggesting it has an important function, it's not yet been formally demonstrated that it plays a directly adaptive role. Are there any other possibilities? Well, our group studies mistranslation in mycobacteria. We showed that mycobacteria can misincorporate glutamate and aspartate at high levels, around 1% per codon, and this increases even more in response to stress. Mycobacteria that have high mistranslation rates are better at surviving against the antibiotic refractism, which targets, which targets RNA polymerase. And if we decrease mistranslation by making high-fidelity ribosomal mutants, these strains are killed more quickly by rifampicin, suggesting that mistranslation is both necessary and sufficient for tolerance to rifampicin. But might that not be a while and indirect in the increased effect that we just discussed? Good question. We purified the drug target of rifampicin RNA polymerase directly from high, normal, and low mistranslating strains. We showed that the protein target also varies in rifampicin resistance in proportion to mistranslation rates. This suggests that direct protein sequence variation due to mistranslation is causing the phenotype, and even small changes in the resistance sequence variance of about 1-5% to were enough to significantly affect the phenotype. In another study, Santos and colleagues also showed that mistranslating candida are also most, uh, more tolerant to azole antifungals. Um, that means if a protein with specific sequence variants can exert dominance even with this low abundance, those proteins could be proper candidates in which to look for adaptive phenotypes through mistranslation. Exactly. Okay, you've now convinced me that mistranslation could be adaptive, but how common is it, really? Well, we may be underestimating how common mistranslation is. In one classic study, Natural isolates of E. coli were compared with a lab strain in terms of their mistranslation rate. Initially, the natural isolates varied considerably in their mistranslation rates, but converged to the same rate as the lab isolates after passaging in the lab. So, it could be that mistranslation is actually more common and even beneficial in environments which uh, emulate what organisms in the wild compared to lab conditions. Well, we don't have all the answers, and that's part of what makes it so exciting to be working on mistranslation right now, as you well know. That's true for sure. Every experiment I, every experiment I do seems to open up more questions than answers. Well, that's all part of the fun. But don't worry, Jun Hao. I'm sure you'll finish your PhD, and that's no mistake.